Uh, hello, Tony here from Lightwave Digital. Today we're going to be looking at particle emitters in Lightwave 3D. So, to get to where the particle emitters are, if you go to the effects tool at the top and then go straight down and add emitter, you get this little panel. So there's two types of emitters. There's a HV emitter, and then if you look under the drop down, there's particle emitters. So the HV emitter, and it stands for hypervoxels, these emitters are invisible unless you texture them when you put them in your render. With the uh, particle emitters on, they're one, they're one point polys that show up in your surface editor with its own surface. And then you can also use the edge options and the point thickness to make them bigger as well. So you've got two quite really cool options here. So we'll start off with the HV emitter. Let's start by going down the actual tab. So we'll start with the generator and the particle tab so at the top you've got groups so with the group what this is is let's say for instance you have multiple emitters three or four emitters and you have a wind effector but you only wanted the wind to affect maybe two of those emitters so what you would do is group them create a group and put them together so then you can decide on how uh, the actual wind would affect just those two emitters and you can have as many groups as you want in this as well so it's really cool to to be able to separate different effects so they only affect what you want them to affect with the birth rate and the generated by size if we press play it's currently the birth rate is a hundred particles per second so let's say for instance we made this I don't know 20 so any per second but we could say it by frame we can say that we want it to affect by speed so with the speed nothing happens because you need to have the object moving and you also need to have keyframes to speed it up so for instance if i was to move it let's say my player to 30 and i was to move it to here and then by the time it gets to 40 it goes up a bit and then 50 it goes back here a bit and then let's say 55 it kind of comes right down here so what that would do is be generated by the speed like so now you've you've noticed that they've just disappeared that's because under the particle here it's only got a life lifetime of 60 however the main thing is the particle limit is only set to a thousand so let's put a couple of zeros in there so here you can see. So now, when I press play, as you can see, so as you can see, the actual generated is by the speed between the actual keyframes. Play it one more time, as you can see, like so. So next, what we've got is the nozzle. So this is again how it appears. So if I just pull this across a bit, as you can see, the nozzle says sphere, and it's a sphere in here. So if I was change it to say box it will change inside that to box like so and then you've got other options in under here for the different nozzle uh, options as well uh, the next is a size effect the size effect settings determines how key framing a size change for an emitter affects the particles so and there's various settings under here that you can experiment with there's also your generator size. So currently the generator size is one meter by one meter by one meter. So let's say for instance, let's make this 20 mil. Okay. And then let's make the, the X and Y a lot bigger as you can see. So when we press play. And obviously I've still got the keyframes and the movement. On before but you could if you wanted to if I would if I remove these keyframes so I'm just selecting them under my dope track here and what I'm doing is I'm right mouse clicking and I'm just deleting it so there's no animation and stuff but what and so currently it's generated by speed but there is no speed I'm just going to tell it to generate by frame so for every frame you've got a birth rate of 20 so you could uh, let's pull this up in the air like so and 
currently it's 20 meters 20 meters 20 mil and as you can see i can use so that's the size and you've got a particle limit so you can limit how many particles you can also fix when it starts so if you don't want it to start on frame zero you can tell it to start on whatever frame you want but that is the basics of the, the generator tab so if we jump over to the particles tab we've got these different settings that we can play with as well that will affect the stuff that we're kind of generating here Basically, what I've moved it up in the air for, which we're not going to cover that much in here, is you've got all, all these other tabs that we're going to look at. But if we was to put in uh, under the actual etc. tab here, the ETC tab, Earth's gravity minus 9.8, and then press play, you'll notice it's falling to the ground using Earth's gravity. So basically, you could use this for rain or snow and so on and stuff. So I just wanted to show you that is like that so let's go back here and let's have a look at the particle uh, tab now so with the particle tab if we start at the top so the particle weight so this is uh, the properties that influences how the particles react with the gravity so if we just press play now we've got the gravity change as we as i've shown you before just here but let's imagine that we wanted to make this let's make it 0 0.1 and you can see the difference but we could also in the plus let's put in 10 so as you like I say if you look in your camera view here again the good thing about uh, the actual particle weight is and the size and the resistance is it's always about experiment and playing and each one's got its own like T and E so you can animate the actual weight changing or you can use a texture to val value to drive it as well so I mean it's quite nice so I mean let's put it back to zero so with the particle size this affects the outer boundaries used for collision detectors and then you've got the particle resistance which kind of adds an ear resistant effect so particles will move slower as you increase the value so if we put in say five let's put in something high like 20. The, now you've not seen them go far because your timeline is only 120 so let's put it up to say 500 like so and then the lifetime i want it to go on the same as well, let's put it 500 as well because otherwise they're just going to live and die over 60 frames but as you can see now they've got them set the same so it's 500 but we could tell it to be let's do 120 so they're kind of being born and by the time they get to about this level so you've got to decide how far you would like them to go like so if you put zero in this means infinity so it means it'll just keep going forever and as you can see here you've got the resistance let's put the resistance again down to to one as you can see so we've got some heavy rain there maybe like so and then at the bottom we've just got a few other sets so we've got fixed random is for generation of particles in most cases this just needs to be left on you've got your show id by activating this it shows the id options each particle particle will have its own number which again i don't really have on personally you've got show size so show size option draws a wireframe sphere around the particles representing the particles current size so for the output size if the output size is not checked the size will always be one and then show particles is where you want to show it in the actual open gi so again like so and they see the sizes and stuff so that's the first two tabs which i've kind of zipped through and what i'll do in the next part is do the motion and the etc tab a bit more depth so thanks for listening look out for part two